What is the most well-known coordinate system? The most well-known coordinate system is the Cartesian coordinate system. Cartesian coordinates, as part of Cartesian geometry, are determined by locating a point using the distances, measured in various units, from perpendicular axes. This system uniquely marks the position of a point on a plane by using two numbers. Cartesian coordinates, or in three-dimensional space by using three numbers thus. Giving their distances from two or three mutually perpendicular lines, Cartesian axes. How do surveyors use mathematics? Surveyors use mathematics especially geometry and trigonometry because they need to measure angles and distances on the ground. They then interpret the data. Accurately plotting such information as boundaries and locations of structures on a map. These maps are then used for personal or legal means. Such as a survey of a person's lot showing ownership boundaries in order to obtain a mortgage. The traditional method of surveying is called plane surveying, which does not take into consideration the curvature of the earth because. For most small projects, this curvature doesn't really matter. When it does, especially for projects measuring greater distances. The method used is called geodetic surveying. Where did the symbols for division originate? The history behind the division symbols is long and complicated. The following lists how the major ones developed, closed parenthesis the arrangement 8, 24, meaning 24 divided by 8 in this case. Was used by Michael Stifel, 1486 or 1487 to 1567, in Arithmetica Integra, 1544. The obelisk by 1,659 Swiss mathematician Johann Heinrich Rahn. 1622 to 1676, introduced the division symbol, O, called an obelisk, in his book Tucha Algebra. The symbol was a combination of colon and dash. This division symbol was used by many writers before Rahn as a minus sign. In 1668, when Ron's book was translated into English with additions by English mathematician John Pell. 1610 to 1685, the division symbol was retained. Some say Pell greatly influenced Ron to develop the symbol. But most historians agree that there is little evidence of such a connection. Slash another sign for division, the slash, slash, was actually first used for fractions. Such as two-thirds or one-half. It can be extended into other, larger, or smaller numbers. Such as 123 slash 112 and 0 0.112 slash 0 0.334. Little is known about its origins, but it is known that the symbol was sometimes used for subtraction. Until it became standard practice for representing division.
Are there different types of prime numbers? Yes, there are different types of prime numbers, including the following. Mersenne prime see the box text for an explanation twin primes primes of the form p and p plus 2, in other words. They differ by 2, discovering such a prime involves finding 2 primes. Factorial slash primorial primes primorial primes are of the form n hashtag plus or minus 1, factorial primes are of the form n plus or minus 1. Sophie Germain primes this is an odd prime p for which 2p plus 1 is also a prime. It was named after Sophie Germain, 1776 to 1831. Who proved that the first case of Fermat's last theorem for exponents was divisible by such primes. Other names for prime numbers are mainly for descriptive purposes. For example, in 1984, mathematician Samuel Yates defined a titanic prime to be any prime with at least 1,000 digits. In the past few decades since his definition, there have been over a thousand times more such primes discovered. Yates also coined the term gigantic prime to indicate a prime with at least 10,000 digits. A great deal has happened in the last few decades, so it is only a matter of time before the first 10 million digit prime is found. Although it is still unknown what name that prime number will be given. What are prime and composite numbers? Prime numbers are positive integers, natural numbers that are greater than 1 and have only 1 and the prime number as divisors, factors. Another way to define a prime number is an integer greater than 1 in which its only positive divisors are 1 and itself. For example, prime numbers less than 20 are 2. 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, and 19. All other integers greater than 1 that are not prime are called composite numbers. There are other rules, the number 1 is unique, and is not considered a prime or composite number. And one of the basic theorems of arithmetic is that any positive Integer is either a prime or the product of a unique set of prime numbers. For example, the number 12 is not a prime, but it has a unique prime calculation written as 2x2x3. What is arithmetic progression? Arithmetic progression is one of the more simple types of series in mathematics. It is usually in the form of a, a and d, a plus 2d, a plus 3d, and so on. In which a is the first term and d is the constant difference between the two successive terms. A progression is also seen as these numbers are added. As in a plus, a and D, plus, A plus 2D, plus, A plus 3D, plus, A plus, N plus 1, D. An example of an arithmetic progression would be 2 plus 6 plus 10 plus 14 plus, in which D is equal to 4.
What were some contributions John Haldane made to genetics? Scottish geneticist John Burton Sanderson Haldane, 1892-1964, along with Sir Ronald Aylmer Fisher. 1890-1962, and Sewell Green Wright, 1889-1988, developed population genetics. Among other contributions, Haldane's famous book The Causes of Evolution, 1932 was the first major work of what came to be known as the modern evolutionary synthesis. It made use of Charles Darwin's theory of the evolution of species by natural selection. Presented in terms of the mathematical consequences of Gregor Mendel's theory of genetics. To form the basis for biological inheritance. How is predicate calculus interpreted? Predicate calculus may be a general system of logic. But it accurately expresses a large variety of assertions and provides many types of reasoning. It is definitely more flexible than Aristotle's syllogisms and more useful. In many cases, than propositional calculus. Predicate calculus makes heavy use of symbolic notation, using lowercase letters a, b, c, x, y, z to denote the subject, in predicate calculus often referred to as individuals, and uppercase letters M, N, P, Q, R. To denote predicates, the simplest of assertions are formed by moving the predicate with the subject. For example, using the all quantifier means that when you have an arbitrary variable you must prove something true about that variable and then prove that it does not matter what variable you chose because it will always be true. Thus, from propositional calculus the sentence, all humans are mortal, becomes. In predicate calculus, all things x are such that, if x is a human, then x is a mortal. This sentence may also be written symbolically under predicate calculus. To compare, the sentence X is a human is not a statement in propositional. Calculus see above because it involves an unknown entity X, therefore. A truth value cannot be assigned without knowing what X represents. How are imaginary numbers used in electrical engineering? Imaginary numbers are used in electrical engineering because complex numbers are an integral part of electrical problems. In fact, there are often more imaginary numbers in electrical engineering problems than there are real numbers. This is because a complex number is a pair of numbers in which one number is real. The other imaginary, or a real number multiplied by the value i, defined as the square root of minus 1, for more information about imaginary numbers, see Math Basics. For instance, we know electricity flows through an electrical circuit component such as a light bulb. 
the bulb actually resists the flow of some electricity by doing work or shining thus. The current is real and measured by a current meter. But if the current can't flow through a device, the current becomes imaginary. For example, a capacitor is two pieces of metal that do not touch. Therefore, if one adds a voltage, no real current can flow through it. How are the surface area and volume of a three-dimensional geometric figure calculated? The surface area, often abbreviated S. A, of a three-dimensional geometric figure is the total surfaces of the solid. It actually has units of distance or length squared. For example, the surface area of a cube is 6A2, in which A is the length of the sides. To translate, a cube has sides of equal lengths, A. The area of a cube is the sum of the areas of the six squares, A2, that cover it. For more diverse figures, the surface area is actually equal to the lateral area plus the area of each base. For example, the surface area of a prism or cylinder is the lateral area plus the area of each base. Because the bases for a prism or cylinder are congruent. This is often expressed as twice the area of the base. The surface area of a pyramid or cone is the lateral area plus the area of the single base. The volume of a three-dimensional geometric figure is the total amount of space the object occupies. Volumes of such objects have units of length cubed. For example, the volume of a box, also called a rectangular parallelopiped, is length times width times height, or LXWXH, the volume of a cube is all the sides a cubed, or a 3. What is the bathtub curve? Industrial engineers usually know about the bathtub curve. Especially in reference to an operating or failing unit. In other words, if enough units from a given population are observed operating and failing over time. It is relatively easy to compute week by week, or month by month or year by year, estimates of the failure rate. The results of the calculated population failure rates over time produces a graph. Because the shape of this failure rate curve resembles the end-to-end -end section of an antique bathtub, it is widely known as the bathtub curve. This type of analysis is usually used in industrial settings. For example, it can describe the expected failure rate of certain electronics over time. Initially high, then dropping to zero failures for most of the system's lifetime. Then rising again to the other end of the tub as the electronics tire out. What is addition? Addition is an operation in which two numbers, called the addends, produce a third number called the sum. 
natural numbers are added by starting with the first addend. And counting as many more numbers as the second addend. For example, for 2 plus 4, you would think 2, 3, as the first number after 2. 4, as the second number, 5, as the third number, and 6, as the fourth number. Thus the numbers add up to 6. Not all numbers are added in the same way as natural numbers. How does a sundial work? The sundial tracks the apparent movement of the sun across the sky. It does this by casting a shadow on the surface of a usually circular dial marked by hour and minute lines. The gnomon or the shadow casting. Angular object on the dial becomes the axis about which the sun appears to rotate. To work correctly, it must point to the north celestial pole, near the star Polaris. Also called the North Star, thus, the gnomon's angle is determined by the latitude of the user. For example, New York City is located at about 40.5 degrees north latitude. So a gnomon on a sundial in that city would be at a 40.5 degree angle on a sundial. The sharper the shadow line, the greater the accuracy, in addition. Larger sundials are more accurate, because the hour line can be divided into smaller units of time. But the sundial can't be too large. Eventually, diffraction of the sunlight around the gnomon causes the shadow to soften. Making the time more difficult to read. What does a plane mean in geometry? A plane in geometry or any other field of mathematics means a surface such that a straight line joining any two of its points lies totally in that surface. A plane is considered to be two-dimensional. When a plane is discussed with higher dimensions, it is called a hyperplane. Thus, in the majority of mathematical discussions, a plane can be thought of as a two-dimensional group. Of points that reach out to infinity in all directions, for more information about dimensions, see above. What is considered one of Archimedes's most significant contributions to mathematics? Archimedes made many significant contributions to mathematics. Though not all mathematicians would agree with the label most significant. But one of his contributions did advance the field of calculus by showing that the area of a segment of a parabola is four thirds the area of a triangle with the same base and vertex. End point, and two thirds the area of the circumscribed parallelogram. To figure this out, he constructed an infinite sequence of triangles. Or wedges, finding the area of segments composing the parabola. He began with the first area, A, then added more triangles between the existing ones and the parabola to get areas of A, A and A slash 4, 
a and a slash 4 plus a slash 16, a and a slash 4 plus a slash 16 plus a slash 64, and so on. Based on his iterations, he determined the following, the first time anyone had determined. The summation of an infinite series, for more about infinite series, see below. A, 1 plus 1 fourth plus 1 40 second plus 1 40 third plus, equals A, 4 thirds, Archimedes also applied this method of exhaustion. Not literally becoming tired, but close to it, to approximate the area of a circle, which, in turn, led to a better approximation of pi. Using such integrations, he also determined the volume and surface area of a sphere and cone, the surface area of an ellipse, and many others. His work is considered the first steps toward integration that would eventually lead to integral calculus. For more information about Archimedes and his wedges, see Geometry and Trigonometry. Why is it difficult to win a lottery? According to one state lottery site, a lottery is a plan that provides for the distribution of money, property, or other reward or benefit to persons selected by chance from among participants some or all of whom have given a consideration for the chance of being selected. In other words, a person buys a chance at winning a certain sum of money. But in reality as with many games of chance the game is not in the participants' favor. With most lotteries, such as a lotto-type lottery, a person has a better chance of being in a car or plane accident or even being hit by lightning than winning. But that doesn't stop many people. One recent statistic shows that, in the United States, an average of more than $96 million is spent on lotteries every day, or more than $35 billion per year. The reason for this dream of winning is simple, it's how this game of chance is perceived. Many people believe that if they just keep the same number, it will eventually be chosen. What they often don't understand when playing a lottery is the idea of replacement. Take a 52 card deck to represent a lottery. With the participant asked to choose a card as the winning card, such as the Queen of Hearts. In the first choice, the King of Diamonds is picked, and not reshuffled back into the deck. After each choice, if the cards are not put back into the deck, eventually, the participants' chances of picking the Queen of Hearts gets better and better. After all, the choices of cards in the deck become less. If one card is left, the participant knows he or she will win. But a regular lottery does not reshuffle the numbers. Instead, lotteries chose from the same group of numbers each week. Which makes it even more difficult to win. There may be repetitions in winning numbers. But the odds of winning are the same each time the lottery is played. For example, the odds of winning a recent California Super Lotto game were 1 in 18 million. Thus, if a person bought 50 lottery tickets a week, his or her chances of winning would be once every 6,923 years.
What is sociology? Sociology is the study and classification of human societies. It delves into the relationships among peoples mostly within, but also outside, each culture. Sociology studies are based on the idea that behavior of peoples is influenced by social, political, occupational, and intellectual groupings. It is also based on the immediate and particular settings in which individuals reside. How can functions be defined based on variables? A function having a single variable is said to be univariate. With two variables, it is bivariate, and with more than two variables it is multivariate. Although two variables are considered multivariate by some people. What type of number system is used by modern computers? Modern computers use the binary system, a system that represents information using sequences of zeros and ones. It is based on powers of 2, unlike our decimal system based on powers of 10. This is because in the binary system, another number place is added every time another power of 2 is reached. For example, 2, 4, 8, and so on, in the decimal system. Another place is added every time a power of 10 is reached, for example, 10, 100, 1000, and so on. Computers use the simple number system primarily because binary information is easy to store. A computer's CPU, central processing unit, and memory are made up of millions of switches that are either off or on the symbols 0 and 1 represent those switches respectively and are used in the calculations and programs. The two numbers are simple to work with mathematically within the computer. When a person enters a calculation in decimal form, the computer converts it to binary solves it, and then translates that answer back to decimal form. What is the absolute value of a number? The absolute value of a real number is the number stripped of any negative value. Therefore, the absolute value of a number will always be greater than or equal to zero. Formally, the absolute value is considered the distance of a number from zero on a number line. The symbol for absolute value is the number inside two parallel vertical lines. For example, the absolute value of x is given as x. If the number is negative within the absolute value sign, it will automatically become positive. In numerical form, 3 equals 3 and dash 3 equals 3. When discussing complex numbers, the absolute value often means squaring the numbers, then taking the square root of those numbers. What is the sieve of Eratosthenes?
the smallest prime numbers those less than 1 million can be determined. Using something invented circa 240 BCE, the sieve of Eratos thence. This method was named after astronomer and mathematician Eratos thence of Cyrene, 276 to 196 BCE. Who was actually more famous for calculating the circumference of the Earth than for his work with prime numbers? To determine primes using this method, make a list of all the integers less than or equal to n. Numbers greater than 1, and get rid of all the multiples of all primes less than or equal to the square root of n. The numbers that are left are all primes. For example, to determine primes less than 100, start with 2 as the first prime. Then write all odd numbers from 3 to 100, there is no need to write the even numbers. Take 3 as the first prime and cross out all its multiples in the numbers you listed. Take the next number, 5, and then 7, and cross out all their multiples. By the time you reach 11, many numbers will be eliminated and you will have reached a number greater than the square root of 100, 11 is greater than 10, the square root of 100. Thus, all the numbers you have left will be primes. Can all quadratic equations be solved by factoring? Don't be fooled, not all quadratic equations can be solved by factoring. For example, x2 3x equals 3 is not solvable with this method. One way to solve quadratic equations is by completing the square, still another method is to graph the solution. A quadratic graph forms a parabola a u-shaped line seen on the graph. But one of the most well-known ways is by using the quadratic formula. For example, if we want to find the roots of the polynomial x2 plus 2x7, we can replace the corresponding numbers from the initial equation into the quadratic equation x2 plus bx plus c equals 0. Thus, a equals 1, b equals 2, and c equals minus 7. How is political polling done? Although polls seem to be magical predictors of election results or the success of product advertising. They are merely a matter of taking information and applying some simple statistics. Polling is a technique that uncovers the attitudes or opinions of a segment of the population. And is based on certain questions about politics, the economy, and even social conditions. The sample population can be chosen randomly, or by other methods. People can be polled via a telephone interview, questionnaire in the mail, or personal interview. Such as an exit poll during an election, polled as a person leaves his or her voting place. Statistics such as averaging and resulting percents are then used to determine the overall pulse of the public. Many commercial poll takers not only claim their results help in market research and advertising, but also get the people's concerns out in the open. Of course, 
just because statistics are used does not make polling infallible, or even reliable. For example, some questions may be misleading. Who invented a way of analyzing syllogisms? In 1880 English logician John Venn, 1834-1923, presented a method to analyze syllogisms. Now known as Venn diagrams. Venn initially criticized such diagrams in works by his contemporaries. Especially those of English mathematicians George Boole, 1815-1864, and Augustus de Morgan, 1806 to 1871. But in 1880, Venn introduced his own, now famous, version of the diagrams in his paper on the diagrammatic and mechanical representation of prepositions and reasonings. By 1881, along with correcting Boole's work, Venn further elaborated on the diagrams in his book Symbolic Logic. Today we are most familiar with Venn diagrams in connection with understanding sets. Although Venn is credited with the diagrams, he was not the first person to use such geometric methods to represent syllogistic logic. German mathematician Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz, 1646-1716, used such graphic representations in his work. And even Swiss mathematician Leonard Euler, 1707-1783, is known to have presented diagrams that had a definite Venish look a century before John Venn. What was François Witt's contribution to geometry? French mathematician François Witt, or Franciscus Vita, in Latin, 1540-1603. Although thought of as the founder of modern algebra, also introduced a connection between algebra, geometry, and trigonometry. He also included trigonometric tables in his Canon Mathematicus. 1571, along with the theory behind their construction. For more about Viet, see History of Mathematics and Algebra. What are geometric postulates? Similar to other parts of mathematics, there are many geometric postulates. Or statements that are assumed to be true without proof. From these postulates, theorems and other type of mathematical statement can be proven. In addition, theorems are proven by definitions or previously proven theorems. An example of a postulate in geometry is, through any two points there is exactly one line. Another is, if two points lie in a plane, then the entire line containing those two points lies in the plane. Who was the first recorded female mathematician? The first known female mathematician was Hypatia of Alexandria, 370-415. to 415, 
who was probably taught by her mathematician and philosopher father, Theon of Alexandria. Around 400, she became the head of the Platonist school at Alexandria. Lecturing on Mathematics and Philosophy Little is known of her writings, and more legend is known of her than any true facts. It is thought that she was eventually killed by a mob. What is infinitesimal calculus? Infinitesimal may mean infinitely small in most people's dictionaries. Or bring up thoughts of subatomic particles. To those who study arithmetic, however, it may mean numbers greater in absolute value than zero. Yet smaller than any positive real number. What are some non-Hindu Arabic numerals encountered around the world? Although Hindu Arabic numerals are the dominant numerals used around the world, there are some places in which other number symbols are used. For example, there are Chinese, Japanese, Kanji, Greek, Thai, and Hebrew numerals. The illustration lists some of the ones encountered by world travelers. For more information about numbers, see Math Basics. What was the Babylonian numbering system? The Babylonians were one of the first to use a positional system within their numbering. System The value of a sign depends on the position it occupies in a string of signs. Neither the Sumerians nor the Akkadians used this system. The Babylonians also divided the day into 24 hours, an hour into 60 minutes and a minute into 60 sec ons, a way of telling time that has existed for the past 4,000 years. For example, the way we now write hours, minutes, and seconds is as follows, 6h, 20, 15. The way the Babylonians would have written this same expression, as sexagesimal fractions, was 6 and 20 sixtieths 15 slash 3600. How is the term surface area used in geometry? Logically, the surface area is the area of a given surface. There are several ways to interpret this in geometry. Area can mean the extent of the surface region on a two-dimensional plane. Surface area, often called the lateral surface area, although there is a difference. Formulas for three-dimensional objects are more complex all the surface. Areas are added around the outside of the object, from a cube to a sphere. Surface area is commonly denoted as S for a surface in three dimensions and A for the surface area of a two-dimensional plane, commonly, it is simply called the area. But be careful, the surface area of a three-dimensional object should not be confused with 
volume or the total amount of space an object occupies. For more about volume, see below. How is linear algebra used to determine the stability of structures? Structural engineers use linear algebra a great deal. Mainly because there are numerous equations with many unknowns associated with the analysis of a structure in equilibrium. Most of the time, these equations are linear, even when bending, material deformation, is involved. Linear algebra can also be used for other structural concerns, because it deals with the study of vectors. Vector spaces, linear transformations, and systems of linear equations. Of course, linear algebra is not only used to understand structures. Almost every subfield in engineering uses these types of mathematical calculations. For more about linear algebra and linear equations, see Algebra. What is a ruler? Usually made of wood, metal, or plastic, a ruler is a measuring stick. Most rulers have a straight edge used for drawing straight lines and measuring lengths. The simplest and most well-known ruler has small scales, measured in terms of inches, or centimeters. In order to read a ruler, the user needs to know the main divisions. For example, when looking at a foot ruler, the longest increments are represented by inches and are Usually numbered 1 through 12, the measurement starts on the left end of the ruler, which may or may not be marked with a zero. The next divisions, from smallest to largest, are The distances between the smallest increments represent a sixteenth of an inch, the distances between the next largest increments represent an eighth of an inch. The next represent a fourth of an inch, and, finally, a half of an inch. For more about measurement, see mathematics throughout history. What are some statistics used in football? There are several mathematical statistics used in football. The touchdown percentage is the touchdown passes divided by the pass attempts. The passer, quarterback, rating is determined by four elements and their statistical calculations. Percent of completions, average yards gained per attempt. Percentage of touchdown passes, and the percent of interceptions. The average is 1.0, the bottom is 0, and the maximum anyone can receive in. Any category is 2.375, this is difficult, for a passer to gain 2.375 in completion percents. He would have to complete 77.5% of his passes. Those passers who earn a 2.0 rating or better are exceptional. For example, the National Football League ranks this at 70% in completions. 10% in touchdowns, 1.5% in interceptions, and 11 yards average gain per pass attempt. 
rushing is a common statistic commonly heard after any football game on the after-game special. It is the average yards per carry, average, a number measured by the total yards divided by the attempts. In punting the net punting average, net, is the gross punting yards. Minus the return yards, minus 20 yards for every touchback, divided by the total punts. What is numerology? Numerology is the study of the, supposed, influence numbers have on human affairs. It is considered an occult art in which numbers are used to reflect the spiritual characteristics of people. In general, numerologists match numbers, such as birth dates, to letters, such as names. Then predict things such as a person's purpose in life, their areas of talent, and even behavior patterns. Numerology charts use the numbers 1 through 9, 11, and 22. The values from birthdays and names are divided so that they equal one of these numbers. With each number indicative of something about the person, such as the life path number, expression number, and so on. Although many people use numerology to make life plans or decisions in their life and some people claim it does work for them there is no mathematical or scientific basis for numerology claims. What is architecture? Simply put, architecture is the design of structures, mainly buildings, by architects. But the definition does not end there. An architect not only builds the structures, he or she also takes into consideration the form, symmetry, spaces, and beauty of the building. In order to do this, Mathematics is needed to work out such building factors as angles, distances, shapes, and sizes. What is symbolic logic? Symbolic logic, also called formal logic, is mainly concerned with the structure of reasoning. It determines the meaning and relationship of statements used to represent specific mathematical concepts and provides a means to compose proofs of statements. Symbolic logic draws most notably on set theory. It uses variables combined by operations such as NOT or AND and assigns symbols to them, AND AND, respectively. What is a rate? The rate is often used in measurement. It is defined as the comparison by division, similar to a ratio. For example, when measuring miles or kilometers per hour in your car, the rate equates the pairs of miles, kilometers, with hours. 
the translation for a rate of 65 miles per hour is that for each hour. One will travel 65 miles as long as the speed remains the same for that hour. What is the calculus? The calculus is a branch of mathematics that deals with functions. Another name for calculus is infinitesimal analysis. It evaluates constantly changing quantities, such as velocity and acceleration. Values interpreted as slopes of curves, and the area, volume and length objects bounded by curves, remember, curves can also mean straight lines. It involves infinite processes that lead to passage to a limit. Or the approaching of an ultimate, usually desired value. The tools of the calculus include differentiation, differential calculus. Or finding a derivative and integration, integral calculus. Or finding the indefinite integral, both of which are foundations for mathematical analysis. What is the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram? The Hertzsprung-Russell diagram is a two-dimensional graph of the mathematical relationship between the absolute magnitude, luminosity, stellar classification, and surface temperature of star sol resulting in a diagram of the stellar life cycle. It was plotted by Danish astronomer Eginar Hertzsprung. 1873197 in 1911 and independently by American astronomer Henry Norris Russell 1877 to 1957 in 1913 What is the major difference between a population and a sample Population is examined to identify its certain characteristics. A sample is taken in order to make inferences about the characteristics of the population from which the sample was drawn. What is a cumulative distribution? A cumulative distribution is a plot of the number of observations that fall in or below an interval. For example, they are often used to determine where scores fall in a standardized test. For example, the x-axis, see bar graph illustration on next page, shows the intervals of scores. Such as the interval labeled 35 shows any score from 32.5 to 37.5, and so on. And the y-axis shows the number of students scoring in or below each interval. This graphically illustrates for the students, and teachers, how well they did on the test compared to other students. What are the rules for adding and subtracting fractions? When adding fractions, 
the denominators need to be the same. But you can't add the denominators to get the answer. Simply put, if the denominators are already the same, the fractions are simple to add, such as 1 third plus 1 third equals 1 plus 1, slash 3 equals 2 thirds. If the denominators are not the same, find the common denominator by multiplication. For example, 1 half plus 1 third equals 3 sixths plus 2 sixths equals 3 plus 2 slash 6 equals 5 sixths. When subtracting fractions, the denominators again need to be the same, and again you can't add, or subtract, the denominators to get the answer. If the denominators are the same, subtract the fractions, such as 2 thirds 1 third equals 2 1, slash 3 equals 1 third. If the denominators are not the same, find the common denominator by multiplication, such as 1 half 1 third equals 3 sixths 2 sixths equals 3 2, slash 6 equals 1 sixth. What are the multiplication rules of probability? In probability theory, the multiplication rule is used to determine the probability that two events, A and B, both occur. As with the addition rules, the notation for multiplication rules of probability are most commonly seen in terms of sets. P, A and B, equals P, A, B, P, B, or P, A and B, equals P, B, A, P, A, in which P, A represents the probability that event A will occur, P, B, represents the probability that event B will occur and P, A and B, is translated as the probability that event A and event B will both occur. In addition, P, A, B, is the conditional probability that event A occurs given that event B has already occurred. And P, B, A, is the conditional probability that event B occurs given that event A has already occurred. Similar to the addition rules, if there are independent events or those that have no influence on one another the equation reduces to p a and b equals p a p b who invented matrices Although a simple form of matrices may have been used by the Mayans, and maybe other cultures. See below, the true mathematical use of a matrix was first formulated. Around 1850 by English mathematician, poet, and musician James Sylvester, 1814-1897. In his 1850 paper, Sylvester wrote, For this purpose we must commence, not with a square, but with an oblong arrangement of terms consisting, suppose, of m lines and n columns. This will not in itself represent a determinant, but is, as it were, a matrix out of which we may form various systems of determinants by fixing upon a number p and selecting at will p lines and p columns, the squares corresponding of pth order. In this case, Sylvester used the term matrix to describe its conventional use or the place from which something else originates. 
But the Matrix story was not all about Sylvester. In 1845 Sylvester's collaborator, English mathematician Arthur Cayley, 1821-1895, used a form of matrices in his work on the theory of linear transformations. By 1855 and 1858, Cayley began to use the term matrix in its modern mathematical sense. Although he was an avid mountaineer and a lawyer for close to a decade and a half. Which is how he met Sylvester, during his free time Cayley published more than 200 mathematical papers. He also contributed a great deal to the field of algebra, initiated analytic geometry of n-dimensional spaces and developed the theory of invariance, among other mathematical feats. Sylvester also remained brilliant throughout his life. He founded the American Journal of Mathematics in 1878, and at the ripe age of 71, he invented the theory of reciprocants, differential invariance. How else is the term function used? Unfortunately, as with many mathematical terms, there is often more than one function for the word function. For example, contrary to the definition above, function can also mean the relationships that map single points in the domain to multiple points in the range called multivalued functions which is mainly used in the theory of complex functions. To further confuse matters, there are also functions called non-multivalued functions. How do you convert from the binary to the decimal system and vice versa? Besides the decimal system, one of the most familiar number systems is the binary numeration system. This is mainly because of its use in computers, for more about computers, see math in computing. In a binary numeration system, only 1 and 0 are used or a base 2 system. Converting between binary and decimal systems is fairly simple. Just remember that each digit in the binary number represents a power of 2. The first column in the base 2 math is the units column, then the 2s, 4s, 8s, etc. columns, all of which can only be filled with zeros or 1s. Since there is no single digit that stands for 2 in base 2, when you get to what stands, for 2, you put a 1 in the 2's column and a 0 in the unit's column, creating 1 2 and no 1's. Thus, the base 10 2, 210, or just 2 in decimal form, is written in the binary as 102, a 3, 310, or just 3 in decimal form, in base 2 is actually 1 2 and 1 1, or 112. The number 4 is actually 2x2. So you eliminate the 2 and unit columns and put a 1 in the 4's column. Thus, 410, or just 4 in decimal form, is written in binary form as 1002. What do we know about Babylonian mathematical tables?
Archaeologists know that the Babylonians invented tables to represent various mathematical calculations. Evidence comes from two tables found in 1854 at Sankara on the Euphrates River, dating from 2000 BC. One listed the squares of numbers up to 59, and the other the cubes of numbers up to 32. The Babylonians also used a method of division based on tables and the equation a slash b equals ax, 1 slash b. With this equation, all that was necessary was a table of reciprocals, thus. The discovery of tables with reciprocals of numbers up to several billion. They also constructed tables for the equation n3 plus n2 in order to solve certain cubic equations. For example, in the equation ax3 plus bx2 equals c, note, this is in our modern algebraic notation. The Babylonians had their own symbols for such an equation. They would multiply the equation by a 2, then divide it by b3 to get, ax slash b, 3 plus, ax slash b, 2 equals ca2 slash b3. If y equals ax slash b. Then y3 plus y2 equals ca2 slash b3, which could now be solved by looking up the n3 plus n2 table for the value of n that satisfies n3 plus n2 equals ca2 slash b3. When a solution was found for y, then x was found by x equals by slash a. And the Babylonians did all this without the knowledge of algebra or the notations we are familiar with today. How do scientists measure the Earth's rotational speed? The Earth's rotational speed is based on the side real period of the Earth's rotation. But it differs depending on where the observer is located. By dividing the distance traveled once around the Earth by the time it takes to travel that distance, the speed can be determined. For example, a person on the Earth's equator will travel once around the Earth's circumference or 24,900 miles, 40,079 kilometers, in one day. To get the speed, divide the miles by the time it takes to get back to the same place. Around 24 hours, or just over 1,000 miles, 1,609 kilometers, per hour. A person at one of the poles is hardly moving at any speed. This is because there is so little distance traveled in a day. A stick stuck vertically in the ice exactly at the north or south pole will only travel about 0.394 inch 1 centimeter per day. What are lateral surface areas? In many mathematical texts, the lateral surface area, L. A, is given along wither instead of the surface area, SA. This type of area is the surface area of a three-dimensional figure, excluding the area of any bases. In other words, the lateral surfaces are the side faces, or surfaces of a solid, or any face or surface that is not a base, or bottom of a figure.
What is some of the earliest evidence of keeping time? No one agrees which culture, s, first invented timekeeping. Some historians and archaeologists believe that marks on sticks and bones made by ice. Age hunters in with each hour composed of 60 minutes, and each minute having 60 seconds. It is unknown why the Babylonians chose to divide by 60, also called a base number. Theories range from connections to the number of days in a year. Weights and measurements, and even that the base 60 system was somehow easier for them to use. Whatever the explanation, their methods proved to be important to us centuries later. We still use 60 as the basis of our timekeeping system, hours, minutes, seconds. And in our definitions of circular measurements, degrees, minutes, seconds. For more information about the Sumerian counting system, see History of Mathematics. How is the sales tax calculated at the checkout? Take, for instance, a purchase of a $100 ring in New York City. A place with a sales tax rate of 8.265%. Multiply $100 times 8.265%, or $100 x 0.08265 equals $8.265, which rounds up to $8.27 for sales tax. The merchant would then charge the customer a total of $100 plus $8.27 equals $108.27. If the same $100 ring was purchased in Florida, the sales tax would be $100 x 6%. Or $100 x 0.06 equals $6 with a total purchase price of $106. Of course, not every purchase will be as straightforward as this. Since some cities can also add local taxes and slash or surcharges and fees to the bill. What is the story behind the Mercenae Primes? Mercenae primes, or mercenae numbers, are connected to prime numbers. They come in the form of 2P1, in which P is a prime, or To put it another way, when 2P1 is prime, it is said to be a mercenae prime. Centuries ago, many mathematicians believed that numbers from the form 2P1, they actually used the form 2N1, which is the same as the 2P1 used today, were prime for all primes P. By the 16th century, it was proven that 211 1 equals 2047 was not prime. By 1603 Pietro Cataldi, 1548-1626, correctly discovered that P equals 17 and P equals 19 were both prime. But he was wrong to add 23, 29, and 37 to his prime numbers list. Soon. Others discovered his errors, including French mathematician Pierre de Fermat. 1601-1665, in 1640 and Swiss mathematician Leonard Euler, 1707-1783, 
in 1738. The hunt for primes continued. The name Mercenay actually came from the French priest Father Marin Mercenay, 1588-1648, who in 1644 referred to such numbers in the preface to his book Cogitata Physica Mathematica. He believed that these special primes were, P equals 2, 3, 5, 7, 13, 17, 19, 31, 67, 127, and 257. But like earlier attempts at determining prime numbers, many of Mercenay's numbers were in error. It took three centuries more to check Mercenay's range of numbers, and by 1947 the correct list of Mercenay primes were P equals 2, 3, 5, 7, 13, 17, 19, 31, 61, 89, 107 and 127. Interestingly enough, even though Mercenay incorrectly stated that certain numbers belong to this group he probably didn't verify all the numbers on his list his name is still attached to these numbers. How does a person calculate the amount of a tip? A tip, or gratuity, is the money given to a person who performs a service for a customer. Such as a waiter or waitress at a restaurant. Depending on the service, in the United States a 10% to 20% tip is usually left. With the most common being 15%. Although many people have stories about the 0% tip they left after a bad experience. The tip is based on the total bill the meal and the tax although some people base the gratuity on just the meal. For example, if a meal at a restaurant costs a total of $10, meal and taxes. A 15% tip would be $10 x 0.15 equals $1.50. The tip is usually left at the table, or given to the waiter or waitress. Or taken out by the establishment and added to a tip pot shared by all the wait staff. There are some mathematical tricks to remember when leaving a tip at a restaurant. To a hairdresser, doorman, or in other appropriate circumstances. A good way to estimate a tip is to round the total bill to the most significant place value. For example, an $18.50 meal would round to $20. Next, move the decimal point of the rounded amount one place to the left, $20 to $2 or 10% of the total cost. Then divide this amount in half to determine 5%, or $2.00 slash 2 equals $1. Add the two resulting amounts to estimate 15% of the total in this instance. $2 plus $1 equals $3 tip. In reality, 15% of $18.50 is $2.78, which is close enough to $3.00. But remember, not every country tips the same. Tipping is a way of life in Egypt, but taxi drivers don't accept tips, French restaurants must add the tip. Usually at 15%, to the bill by law, Tipping in Australia is almost non-existent, no one tips in mainland China. Mainly because the government tax on enough charges to visitors, there is no tipping in New Zealand. 
either, as the price usually includes services, and don't even think about tipping in Japan.